for England. I think it was Eddie Scott who ripped it away. Renee Wycliffe has picked the pocket of the England line and goes in under the post. Cox is looking to spread and stepping as demand is stepping straight through as Lua hate demand and under the post in three minutes gone. Brooker, this is where Brooker is dangerous. Grace Brooker, there's the ball out of the corner. It's almost become a trademark and finished off beautifully in the corner by Lange Vionu again. It is my privilege to name the 2021 Black Fern squad for their tour of England and France. The selected players are Chelsea Alley, Waikato, Ariana Baylor, Waikato, Eloise Blackwell, Auckland, Kelly Brazier, Bay of Plenty, Alana Bremner, Canterbury, Grace Brooker, Canterbury, Kendra Coxedge, Canterbury, Ruahe de Mont, Auckland. Les Elder is named as captain from Bay of Plenty. Dice Faliafunga, Wellington. Stacey Flula, Waikato. Eritana Hohaya, Taranaki. Carla Hohepa, Waikato. Renee Holmes, Waikato. Grace Hopapa Barrett, Waikato. Aldora Itunu, Auckland. Tanya Kaloni Vale, Waikato. Aisha Letelina, Wellington, Philippa Love, Canterbury, Patricia Maliepo, Auckland, Liana Mikaele Tu'u, Auckland, Crystal Murray, Northland, Alicia Pearl Nelson, Auckland, Jonah Ngan Wu, Wellington, Tukurangata Aire Namate, Counties Monaco, Georgia Ponsonby, Canterbury, Kendra Reynolds, Bay of Plenty. Maya Roos, Auckland. Shayel Robbins Reti, Waikato. Ke Amy Rule, Canterbury. Kennedy Simon, Waikato. Renee Wycliffe, Bay of Plenty. Kelsey Wills, Bay of Plenty. And Portia Woodman, Northland. Congratulations to all those selected and to your whānau and rugby communities. It's always a privilege to be wearing the black jersey. So on behalf of the Black Ferns alumni and New Zealand rugby, we wish you all as players and as management the best of luck. We can't wait to see you in action next month. Kia ora. We're delighted to now be able to bring you head coach of the Black Ferns, Glenn Moore. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Glenn. Obviously, what a squad. I, I take it, it it was pretty hard to name this one. Yeah, look, I think it's um, it's a pretty well balanced squad. How we've landed in the end, and we've <clears throat> we've certainly had to have taken a a COVID mindset to it in some ways in terms of how we um, how we ensured that we had enough coverage across all the positions and. You know, allowing that it's, um, you know, if we have to call on a replacement, etc., it's not uh, quite as easy from over there, and certainly complications with, uh, you know, MIQs and all those sorts of things. So we've had to take a lot of things into account. Um, but <clears throat> it would be fair to say probably that one of the most difficult um, selection processes that I can recall in my time um, in rugby and. Um, there, there has been some real quality people and quality players that have, have missed out. Um, and as you said, there's a lot of uh, young, new talent that's been brought in as well. You've named 12 new caps in the squad. It, it's, it's impressive. Um, some extremely good talent coming through the ranks. Um, must be pleasing, of course, for you and the selectors. Yeah, look, it is. And, um, you know, the difficulty that we've we faced and you know, we had a lot of the uh, selection uh, probably uh, bolted down our own mind with uh, when when COVID hit us, and and there was there was a, a few spots that we just wanted to verify through the remainder of the 
uh, FPC, and at that point, you know, players can always pay to play their one at play their way in or play their way out, I guess. But um, and then you know the lockdown hit, and that that's taken those opportunities away. So you know there was obviously a lot of reflection on footage, a lot of reflection on the FPC. Um, looking back to you know we've had a number of camps through the year, and in those camps we we played what we called some situational games. And uh, you know, so a lot of a lot of reflection back um, to that stuff as well to land where we landed. Some tough calls, I imagine, though. Glenn had to be made. Some key players have missed out on selection. Uh, how difficult were some of the conversations with both the selectors and the players? Yeah, look, they they were really tough. Um, you know, in some cases, you know, I felt I felt some of those conversations were were crushing. So probably crushing for them and crushing for me delivering it as well. So, you know, that's um, that's the tough part that, that goes with the job. And, you know, certainly on some of those, uh, as we got towards a conclusion, you know, it probably, it probably took us uh, a good two and a half days to really debate hard and be robust with those conversations within the selection group. And and then, um, you know, then, then it comes down to making, making the final call and, uh, having those conversations, which are always difficult. We're still awaiting a final schedule, um, whether you play Australia before the Northern Tour, uh, but how important is it for you to have four tests locked in against uh, some of the world's best in England and France um, only a year out from the World Cup? Yeah, look, we're, we're really excited about that. And, um, you know, it's been over two years now since we've played an official test match. And, you know, these will, these will be big challenges. Uh, you know, we're working really hard at the moment around you know what a potential return to play is going to look like. Um, we're going to have very limited opportunity for players to play uh, much FPC um, prior to us trying to have a camp and then regroup to assemble to depart. Uh, so, so look, it, it is. Um, though I, I regard the that test program as uh, critical for us, um, given that we it's been so long since we've played in a World Cup round the corner. And you know we we're playing against um, two of the best teams in the world, and and uh, they they've been playing. You know they've they've come off Six Nations, and they'll be back playing um, in their professional club competition um, uh, in a short space of time. So look, they'll be well prepared, and uh, we've got to make sure that we're doing everything we can under these conditions to be as prepared as what what we can be. Uh, you've got Liz Alder back as captain. Just talk to me a little bit about what she brings to the side being back in the mix. Yeah, look, it's, um, it's she's always been a you know crucial part of our, our our setup. She leads from the front. She's obviously um, an outstanding player in her position, and you know she uh, she she has the ability to galvanise people around her. And you know Ella did a fantastic job last year when we had the domestic hit out. Uh, while Les was injured and you know they, they, they are hard conversations and hard decisions to make as well but um, you know I think Les will lead the side well we've named two vice captains in both Ella, Ella Blackwell and um, Kendra Coxhead so um, you know look I'm, I'm confident that, that that leadership group and our wider leader, team leadership group will do a really outstanding job uh, for the for the team. Challenging times in New Zealand at the moment, of course. Um, the Fire Palmer Cup currently on hold because of COVID. What's the plan for for you and the team from here on out? Well, we're still we're still planning on having a camp around about the third of October for a week, and then there'll be a short break, and then we'll be we'll be looking to part around the fourteenth, fifteenth of October. So. Uh, probably still up for discussion as you know we've got the obviously the the French and the English tests are locked and loaded in terms of dates uh, so we, we'll probably have just a little bit more time on the ground across there uh, than what we would normally have but you know we're still also in conversations around you know is there any way that we could make one of the Aussie tests um, come to life uh, so to speak and you know there's a number of scenarios being looked at there um, particularly disappointing that we couldn't get that off the ground here in New Zealand but understandably and I guess the other thing that we're working through at the moment and trying to balance up is that if we couldn't get that Aussie that one Aussie hit out we we may look to play against a English club side um, prior to the week leading into the first English test so 
I think that's pretty crucial for us to be able to get some sort of game time before we head to that, uh, given that there will be you know limited opportunity back here. Well, she missed the 2020 season to become a mum, but Les Alder is back and set to lead this Black Fern squad in a few weeks' time. Les, thank you so much for having a chat with us today. Um, I suppose, first of all, how's lockdown going for you and your whanau? Yeah, I mean, we're really, really fortunate. Um, we live in the bay, so straight away, you know, we've got some advantage around the weather. But I've got a perfect little setup. I'm, I live across the road from the rugby field. I've got a full gym set up. Um, you know, I get to spend time with my husband, um, who's in the background there, and my daughter. So I, I actually love it. Other than missing the interaction with the girls, um, it's really good. Your back is captain again. Um, must be extremely proud and excited to lead this side. How good is it to be back in the mix? Yeah, I mean, I, like a lot of the girls, I'm just excited to play some test match footy. Um, it's been a couple of years since the Black Ferns have been out on the pitch so you know to have some some confirmation around test matches is really really exciting and obviously to be back in the team um and for my girl to be able to watch me that's going to be you know that'll pull on the heartstrings a little bit so yeah super excited obviously Eloise Blackwell stepped in as captain last year um she's a good friend of yours obviously what did you make of her leadership yeah I mean, for that whole leadership group that stepped in during that 2020 um, Barbarian series, you know, it was a tough challenge um, because there was there was a schedule set out, and you know, to mentally come up, get over that, and then prepare for the Barbarian series, it was always going to be really tough. Um, so, really cool now that we can, you know, get back out there on the pitch and put the jersey on. That'll be it'll be awesome for the growth of our team. You must be so pumped to, to finally play some test match rugby les. Great rivals in England and France as well. So what are you expecting from them when you head up north? Oh heck yeah it's gonna it's not gonna be easy. It's gonna be it's gonna be hard. Um, firstly, you know, seven weeks on the road. Um, obviously two of those in MIQ but that's a challenge in itself. Um, not having played together as well and not really having any build-ups into those two into those four test matches um presents challenges but the cards have cards have been dealt and we've just got to we've just got to roll with it so we'll be up for the challenge there's going to be a lot of mahi that will need to be put in um in those weeks leading up to it but we're not going there you know to make up any excuses we're going there to put our best foot forward and um there'll be quality sides to come up against, so we've got to be prepared. Back to the squad. Um, some girls today would have heard their name called out for the first time. Um, can you remember what it was like for you w when you got named in the team? Yeah, 100% like it was yesterday. Um, I'd actually missed selection um, and got pulled in for injury cover. So, um, you know, I, I kind of went through the, the sad time of not being selected to the absolute best time of my life. Um, I still remember it like it was yesterday. So for all those girls that, that got that call for the first time, or even that were in the squad last year, but actually get to um, prepare for their first test match, um, it's an exciting time and I can't wait to, you know, embrace those girls when we actually get to see each other face to face. Yeah, well, exactly. How have you guys been staying connected during this time? Um, it's a real tricky one, right? Because we're still in FPC season, so you don't want to over overload the girls too much um, from the top, you know, because they're always they're already probably getting a lot of content and connection from their own FPC team. So it's very much being just let them do that. Um, there's been little touches here and there, but not a lot put of expectation put on the girls at this time of the year, especially you know we've got girls dealing with level four still. Um, and the pressures that come with lockdowns, so we don't want to overdo it. Uh, and, and training, I suppose, too. It's something that you guys have to keep up. How has the training been going? Yeah, I mean, look, I train, obviously, to be my best on the rugby pitch, but I think even if I wasn't a rugby player, I'd do what I do anyway. I actually just love it for my own mental health. Um, so it hasn't actually changed for me. Um, like I said, I've got full setup. There's no excuses for me to not train. So I've continued my normal routine um, that Bay of Penny, you know, send out each week. And, you know, my, my husband just gets to take a few tackles. So good for me because he's, you know, he's not a, not a small human. So it's quite good to test me. Oh, I absolutely bet. Um, awesome, Les. Well, thank you so much for your time. I believe you've got one last special message. Um, kia ora, everyone. If you've got any questions uh, for any of our Black Ferns girls, uh, they'll be doing a Insta Live. So 
head over, head over to our Insta page, flip them a question and they'll get back to you as soon as possible. And lastly, hope you're all safe during lockdown. Thank you for constantly supporting the Blackbirds.